May 3rd is the birthday of a great American who in his own way changed the course of our history. Musician, activist, humanitarian, Pete Seeger was a giant of a man who walked humbly on this earth. This is for Pete's sake. Celebrating Pete Seeger's 100th birthday, I am Larry Long. Well, may the skiers turn, swimmers churn, lovers burn. Peace may the generals learn when I'm far away. Pete well, Seeger changed the course of history by changing the lives of everyone he met. He inspired us all to be a little less selfish and more courageous in our giving. He carried the memories of the people and the songs he wrote, the songs he sang, the stories he told, and the decisions he made daily to stand for justice from wherever he stood. I met Pete through the former farmer labor governor of Minnesota, Elmer Benson, after I sang in support of family farmers in the American Agriculture Movement Strike Office in Appleton, Minnesota. Governor Benson said, You remind me of Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger when they traveled through Minnesota during the Great Depression and sang for the lumberjacks and miners who were on strike. One month later, after arriving in Washington, D.C. with the Farmer's Tractorcade for parody in 1979, I got a call from Pete in response to Benson's prompting. Pete shared stories with me about singing for striking dairy farmers at our nation's capital and gave me encouragement to keep singing for the people. Pete cared deeply for his neighbors, and we cared for him. Because the entire world was Pete's neighborhood. His kitchen table was filled with letters that arrived daily from those who loved him. He would separate those letters in piles and meticulously go through each one with handwritten responses in the margins or on postcards with a sketch of a banjo next to his name. I loved Pete as a father figure. I loved him as a friend. I would call him on the phone at odd hours from the road. Sometimes we would talk for hours, other times for only a few minutes. But no matter how long we talked, I always felt a whole lot better. Conversations with Pete just kept flowing into laughter and inspiration to keep on trying to make this world a little better than it was when it was handed down to us. During the next hour, I'd like to share excerpts from a live performance I produced on May 3, 2014, in honor of Pete Seeger's 95th birthday. But first, let's go back in time to hear from Pete Seeger himself. I was able to be with Pete in 1996 and was lucky enough to sing with him as we sat around the table and recorded his life story, which I later put to music. Here's Pete. Pete Seeger, born May 3rd, 1919, and it is now October 24th, I think, 1996, and we are sitting at the table in uh, 526 Texas Street, San Francisco, Larry Long and me. My father said, the truth is a rabbit in a bramble patch. And all you can do is circle around it and point and say it's somewhere in there. You can't put your hand on it and touch it. <laughs> you can't put your hand on that furry, quivering body. All you can do is say it's somewhere in there. <laughs> tell you right now, I was greatly influenced by my father. I was five years old. He gave me a dime and said, go next door and buy something that cost a nickel. But when I was at the store, uh, I meet a neighbor boy. He said, oh, Pete, you got a nickel left over. Why don't we buy a piece of candy? We'll share it. I said, well, I'm supposed to bring it back. Oh, tell him it cost 10 cents. Uh, well, at age five, I didn't know any better. We bought the candy and shared it, and when I got back, said it cost 10 cents. My father got down on his knees in front of me <laughs> and, and held both my hands. He said, Peter, you know it didn't cost 10 cents. Don't you know you never have to lie to us? You never have. We love you. I bought a piece of candy. <laughs> he says, you could have bought the candy. That would have been all right. But you never have to lie to us. And it was the most important lesson I guess I ever got in my life. Well, may the skiers turn, swimmers churn, lovers burn. Peace may the generals learn when I'm far away. Well, 
Says there's really no hope, you know. It's, things are going to get go from worse to worse, and this is the last century of the human race. I tell him, did you expect to see our great Watergate president leave office the way he did? And they say, no, I guess I didn't. I said, did you expect the Pentagon to have to leave Vietnam the way it did? No, I didn't. I said, did you expect uh, to see the Berlin Wall come down so peacefully? It did. <laughs> no, I really didn't expect that. Then I said, "Did you expect to see Mandela, head of South Africa?" <laughs> no, no, I really didn't expect that. I thought he'd rot in jail forever the rest of his life. Well, I said, if you couldn't predict those things, don't be confident that you can predict there's no hope. Well, may the fiddle sound, the banjo play, the old hope down, dancers swinging round and round when I'm far away. Well, may the And now let's go to the Fitzgerald Theater in St. Paul, where community leaders and activists recite the words of Pete Seeger, and musicians perform songs that Pete Seeger either wrote or popularized. Cameron Wright singing My Rainbow Race by Pete Seeger. One blue sky above us One ocean lapping all our Show. One earth so green and round Who could ask for more? And because I love you I'll 
give it one more try to show my rainbow race. It's too soon to die. Some folks want to be like an ostrich, bury their heads in the sand. Some hope that plastic dreams can unclench those greedy hands. So. Louis Alamayu reciting Into the Very Teeth of the Gale by Pete Seeger. In 1962, Rachel Carson's book, The Silent Spring, brought about a turning point in my life. I realized that the world was being turned into a poisonous garbage dump. About that time, I also fell in love with sailing. I started earning a little money, and I got a little plastic bathtub of a boat. Such poetry. 500 years ago, African sailors showed European sailors that if you use triangular sails instead of square sails, you could actually use the power of the north wind to sail towards the north, first northeast, then northwest. You can zigzag into the very teeth of the gale that's trying to force you back. Now, that's good politics, too. (laughs) Martin Luther King used the forces against him to zigzag ahead. 
In 1963, an artist friend, Vic Schwartz, told me they used to have sloops on the river with a boom of 70 feet long. This isn't the place to go into more details except to say that three years later, the sloop Clearwater was launched. It's owned by a democratic nonprofit organization of several thousand members. Since 1969, it's taken 400,000 school kids out on educational sales, 50 at a time. The Hudson is noticeably cleaner. The clear water is one of the reasons why. Somos el barco, sung by Esther Godinez, popularized by Pete Seeger. Words and music by Larry Wyatt. Verse three written by myself, Larry Long. Randy first reported for the Minneapolis Star and Tribune, a member of Communications Guild Local 37002, reciting Each Step Forward by Pete Seeger. As the late Lee Hayes said, good singing won't do, 
Good praying won't do. Good preaching won't do. But if you get them all together <laughs> with a little organizing behind it, you get a way of life and a way to do it. Each step forward came as a result of enormous work and courage, some bloodshed, and music like this from Woody Guthrie, which kept people's spirits alive. Keep singing. Keep making things better. Union made by Woody Guthrie, popularized by Pete Seeger, performed by Pop Wagner, Tony Glover, and Charlie McGuire. Third verse written by Pop, Tony, and Charlie. There once was a union maid who never was afraid of the goons and ginks. The company thinks the deputy sheriffs that pulled the raid should go to the union hall when the meeting it was called. And when the company thugs come around, she always held her ground. Oh, you can't scare me, I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. Can't scare me, I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union till the day I die. That union maid was wise to the tricks of the company spies. She couldn't be fooled by the company stool. She always organized the guys. She always got her way when she struck for better pay. She'd show her card to the National Guard, and this is what she'd say. Oh, you can't scare me, I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. Oh, you can't scare me, I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union till the day I die. that want to be free just take a little tip from me stand right up with the union folk in solidarity working life is proud when you join the union crowd company boys hate union noise so let's give it to them loud oh you can't scare me i'm sticking to the union i'm sticking to the union i'm sticking to the union oh you can't scare me i'm sticking to the union I'm sticking to the union to the day I die. Minneapolis school board member Kim Ellison reciting Rising of the Women by Pete Seeger. Woody Guthrie had a sign on his guitar, This Machine Kills Fascists. When he was hospitalized in 52, I wrote on the head of my banjo, This machine surrounds hate and forces it to surrender. As I start the 90th year of my life on this earth, I do believe it will be the women who will show how to get this warring world together. In millions of little organizations, north and south, east and west, city and country, men and women will show how to accomplish things that big, power-hungry organizations have been unable to do. Oh, Had I a Golden Thread by Pete Seeger, performed by Tanya Hughes. Oh, had I a golden thread and a needle so fine. strand of a rainbow
and in it I would weave the innocence of the children of all the earth Public Defender for the Common Good, Jacqueline Long, honoring Toshi Aline Ota Sigur. Life can be tough for a folk singer's wife. <laughs> when I married Larry Long and was introduced to the Seegers, Pete said, How wonderful! But Toshi said, Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> it's true. She was thinking of her life with Pete and the many, many hundreds of days raising children alone in their log cabin home. Sometimes she was snowbound and she didn't have one person to help her shovel out. And it's up on a high hill. But she was a wonderful woman and she stuck with it. Pete wrote, half the time I was away singing someplace. One year Toshi counted the days I was home, 90 out of the years 365. That might have been the year after I was sentenced to jail for not cooperating with the House Committee on Un-American Activities. We accepted almost every job offered on the assumption that most would be canceled, but none were. (laughs) The Court of Appeals acquitted me. It was a horrendously busy year. Toshi said at the end of that year, never again. Next time, no appeal. Let Pete go to jail. (laughs) That's what Toshi said after a particularly difficult year, but she was always there in a marriage that lasted a lifetime. And I have the honor to be out here tonight to say a few words about the woman behind the man who I had the honor to meet and stay with a little bit. Pete was the sails, but Toshi was the rudder who kept their family boat afloat. She handled most of the details of their shared life. She was feisty and powerful and a loving force for all of their projects on the Hudson River. 
She often organized all day long and then cooked her famous stone soup to feed the volunteers. Toshi passed away on July 9, 2013. It's probably not surprising that Pete didn't last that much longer. He went to his Toshi. We miss her and we honor her tonight. She was wonderful. In 1954, when Pete wrote the inspirational adaptation of Ecclesiastes in the song, Turn, 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 Toshi wrote her own verses for her children who missed their father. Our next performers will sing some of Toshi's. Turn, Turn, Turn by Pete Seeger, sung by Barb Tilson and Patty Kaycock. Featuring additional verses by Toshi Seeger. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose. Under Time to teach, a time to learn, a time for all to take their turn. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time. Civil Rights and Social Justice Elder Dr. Josie Johnson reciting the following words by Pete Seeger in honor of Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson had sung for a wonderful Unitarian couple a small benefit concert for two years. And then they thought it could be a bigger concert and they got a bigger place than their farm just north of Peekskill. Well, a man came up from Washington. He said, that man, Robeson, he doesn't love America, and he's coming here to sing. I think you know what to do about it. And he went away to Washington. He didn't need to say anything more. In other words, whatever rough stuff they did, they wouldn't get any trouble from Washington about it. So the first concert did not take place. The people setting up the chairs were beaten and the literature was all burned. It was a benefit for the Civil Rights Congress, which was a lefty outfit. Well, Robeson got on the air and said, it's America. I have a right to sing. I'm going to sing. And this time it got an even bigger place because with all this free publicity, (laughs) some 20,000 people showed up. (laughs) 
And this time, it got an even bigger place because with all that free publicity and the 20,000 people showing up, the police let them in. And we congratulated ourselves on how it's America and they don't break up the stage or anything. 2,000 union members, mostly local 65 warehouse workers, stood all around, arm in arm, wouldn't let anybody who didn't have a ticket in. And I sang a couple songs. Oh, what was the name of the man? I can't remember his name. He played some beautiful classical piano. And then Robeson sang for an hour. We are climbing Jacob's ladder We are climbing Jacob's ladder We are climbing Jacob We are brothers and sisters. Oh, well, we are climbing. Shake us. Jacob's Ladder featuring Robert Robertson with Joyful Noise.
Former Mayor of Minneapolis, Sharon Sells Belton, reciting Peekskill Riot by Pete Seeger. When finally our car got to get out, I saw some glass in the road, and I said to my family, I had two little babies, my wife, two friends, and my father-in-law, who came along. He says, I want to make sure those babies are safe. And I saw some glass, and I said, uh-oh, be prepared to duck. Somebody may throw a stone. Well, it was the understatement of the century. Around the corner was a pile of stones, each as big as a baseball, and a young man heaving them with all the force that he had at every car that came by. And around the corner was another pile of stones and another fella heaving them. There must have been 15 or 20 piles of stone before we got into Peatskill. There was a policeman standing about 50 feet beyond the stone thrower. And I stopped the car and I tried to get the window down, but it was so splintered up I could only get it down an inch. So I hollered, officer, aren't you going to do something about this? And all he said was, move on, move on. In other words, he knew all about it. And I found out later that it had been planned by the Ku Klux Klan members in the police department. And that's what I was told by somebody who should know because his father was deeply involved in it. Amy Bryant and Chastity Brown performing Keep Your Eyes on the Prize. your eyes on the prize hold on hold on hold on hold on keep your eyes on the prize and hold on pull inside this begin to shout doors flew open and all popped out keep the eyes Hold on Alana Galloway from the Communication Workers of America, AFL-CIO, recites, It's been a long, hard struggle by Pete Seeger. Well, one man lost his eyesight that day in Peekskill. 
Paul Robeson Jr. could have been lynched because he has a white wife. And they were prepared to lynch him. And they almost lynched another black man who had a white woman with him. That's another story. But the interesting thing is Peak Skill is a different place today. And it's been a long, hard struggle. But things have gradually changed. Who knows? Who knows? I say it's still America. Deep in my heart, I do believe someday we'll all be free. Someday we'll all be free. I do not know how long it will be. Someday we'll all be free. Someday we'll all be free. Someday we'll all be free. Robert Robertson performing We Shall Overcome. Lyrical and musical adaptation by Zofia Horton, Frank Hamilton, Guy Carawan, and Pete Seeger. Spoken word poem written and recited by Brittany Delaney. The soil has seen so much where we are growing up, has swayed with history and waltzed with the hands of inequality, a romance kissed on the lips of generations long before we arrived here. We paddle feet across this very dirt, tracking over footprints so deep we stumble and ridges swing on trees where strange fruit dangled turn corners on the tips of angels whose wings lie like murals on tops of shoulder blades that carry the bridges that will link us from one hand to another. The soil has seen so much where we are growing up, has danced through the deafening sounds of disparity, ballads played on the keys of human instruments, melodies of inhumanity swirled into the blueprints of the sidewalks we play hopscotch on, drenched into the music that lulls generations of family into separation, the soil where our grandparents padded, tattered, too tight shoes from miles to schoolhouses not designed to teach them freedom, where the sirens spray from blue and red lights unearthing the heartbeats from frightened souls who recognize the Jim Crow in the soundtrack, symmetrical like hands above heads and prayers above tongues, where mother's arthritic hands have been broken into permanent steeples by late nights and empty beds in their wombs, seen the marching of all colors, linked hands and arms fighting backbones forward. We paddle our feet across this very dirt tracking over footprints so deep we stumble in the ridges turn corners on the tips of angels whose clipped wings lie like murals on top of shoulder blades scarred and beaten but not defeated and some ask why not take the easier road the less scenic route why not be like those who walk with their eyes closed to history as though it would stop guiding the way of our future if we just ignored it like the drums in our blood could stop beating if we just stopped listening to the snare line? It's because we have to. Because every day we wake with one more opportunity to move air through our lungs, our necks have the duty to stay in alignment with the sky, our minds the responsibility to shovel deeper grooves into ridges embedded in the palms of our hands like hieroglyphic maps from God. We take this road because this is the world that the meek shall inherit, that our children's minds will make home and daring young leaders waiting to run their torches held high in hand, spirits unbroken like healing, like believing, like tomorrow because it chose us because there is too much before and after to pretend like we don't see the hands of ancestors lying like angel wings spread wide in our dreams and are locked with the still of revolutions holding up our feet from birth whispering the hymns of equity deep into our souls singing the melodies of freedom in the wind singing melodies of overcoming in the wind singing melodies of purpose in the wind we paddle our feet across this road every day tracking over footprints so deep we will often stumble in the ridges but our hands though scarred our bridges each finger representing one half of a pinky promise to overcome we are all meant for this we are all meant to develop what was planted in the soil
your voices. Johnson, Chester Brown, and Amy Bryant perform If I Had a Hammer, written by Lee Hayes and Pete Seeger. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, all over this land. I'd hammer on danger, I'd hammer on warning, I'd hammer on love between my brothers and my sisters. Land. I got a bell 
Reverend Will Haley reciting the lyrics to Pete Seeger's song, My Old Brown Earth. To my old brown earth and to my old blue sky, I'll give these last few molecules of I and you who sing and you who stand nearby, I do charge you not to cry. Guard well this human chain. Watch well, you keep it strong as long as sun will shine. And this, our home, keep pure and sweet and green. For now I'm yours, and you are also mine. This has been a musical celebration in honor of Pete Seeger's 100th birthday centennial year. This giant of a man was a great American and citizen of the world who walked humbly on this earth but changed the course of history by inspiring each of us to be a little less selfish and more courageous in our giving. I have been your host, musician and Pete's friend, Larry Long. The music you heard was from my recording, Well May the World Go, a Smithsonian Folkways and Appleseed records and from a gathering of community leaders, activists, and musicians led by Dan Chenard and myself at a concert held in 2014 at the Fitzgerald Theater in St. Paul, Minnesota. Fellow bandmates included Brian Barnes, Joe Savage, Peter Shimpke, Mark Anderson, Jane Alexson, Peter Ostrushko. This is, for Pete's sake, celebrating Pete Seeger's 100th birthday centennial year. Produced by myself, Larry Long, with production assistance from Ursula Rudenberg Pacifica Radio Network. As Pete wrote on the head of his banjo, this machine surrounds hate and forces it to surrender. Thank you all for listening.